we are looking for the data to store into the storage as well as we want that the data will be available to us for a longer period of time so if let's say there is a firm is a company and what company is generating data in day to day will be stored somewhere right either you will store in your server locally or you send it to the cloud where your data will be stored now we all know that while storing the data we will not store only the original data we actually store also its duplicate data means its written in data getting it means a copy of the data so that if one disk fail or if one disk goes off we have the data available uh, with us so that is a concept behind redundant array of independent disk redundant means duplicate so duplicate means we should have the duplicate data we should have the same same data available uh, for different disk so that the reliability could be maintained that is the objective of redundant array of independent disk now redundant array of uh, uh, of independent or inexpensive disk a category of disk drive that employ two or more drive in combination for fault tolerance and performance so if we have any fault occur so it can tolerate those fault as well as performance is also get increased how performance goes increase uh, so you must have uh, known the concept of uh, peer to peer network or uh, distributed network so it would also take the concept of distributed uh, database in that what will happen is let's say if the data is available in uh, two three locations or two three disk so let's say the data is of 1 gb hmm? and i have requested that data or uh, uh, to store so let's say uh, there is a there is a movie and movie size is 1 gb and we we want to download that particular movie and that movie is available in two three disk why because i am using the concept of raid redundant array of independent disk so that the reliability will be increased if one disk goes fail or one disk will be faulty i can go to another disk to get the data now this particular in this particular concept when i request for any any data so what will be happen is some portion of the movie will be downloaded from disk 1 some portion of the movie will be downloaded from disk 2 or some portion of the movie will be downloaded from disk 3 so if i am fetching the data from all these three disk definitely the time to to download the 3 1gb of data from different sources will be very less if i want to download it from one source so there is a there is a parallel execution will be taken place parallel download will be taken place hence the performance will be increase hence we can increase the access time right oh, sorry we can decrease the access time we can increase the performance so that is a concept of raid raid disk drive are used frequently in servers but are not generally necessary in the personal computer so in the personal computer we do not use it right in the concept because we have only one hard disk one hard disk available so even though if we have some important document so that document will uh, will make a copy here in in one maybe in the pen drive maybe in your google drive right we do that why we do that if your important document is is will be will not be available in your hard drive you can go to the google drive to get it right so that we do that do but 
rate concept we do not apply into the personal computer we apply into the servers or to the clouds rate allow you to store the same data redundantly means multiple places in the balanced way to improve overall performance so i told you that how we can improve the overall performance now there are different levels of the rate okay so that we'll see what are the different levels of the rate now if we'll go to the levels of the rate it will start with level 0 so what is level 0 level 0 uh, what will happen is strip disk array without fault tolerance so this is nothing but the will will divide or will split or the data without making any copy this is level 0 provide data stripping separate out blocks of each file across multiple disk drive but no redundancy it is saying that even though there is a 1 gb of let's say your uh, movie 1 gb of memory movie is divided into let's say uh, one uh, 100 kb of uh, Oh, sorry ha huh, 100 kb or, or 10 mb of uh, blocks and all those 10 mb is is given across multiple disk but will not make any copy this improve performance yeah definitely it will improve performance as i told you right but the thing is that it will not provide you reliability or it will not give you a fault tolerance if one drive fails all data in the written array will be lost right now come to level 1 is called mirroring or duplicating so what will happen in level 1 is it provide twice the read transaction rate as a single disk here we'll make a mirror of it we have a cop we have a original one and we have a copy of it so we'll store it then there is a level 2 is called error correction error correct correcting code not a typical implementation and rarely used it is stripped data at the bit level rather than the block level ye kya karega what it will do it will divide the data into bit level rather than block level and it will work as a level 1 means it will make a duplicate of it now come to level 3 byte level distribution single party uh, party drive provides byte level stripping with a dedicated ma parity disk so there is a dedicated parity disk parity disk is for the uh, redundant data so we will store the redundant data in a separate disk level 3 which uh, uh, with which cannot uh, Uh, service uh, simultaneous uh, multiple request also it is rarely used so this model is rarely used the the second level 2 model is also rarely used the level 1 is most useful model available so let's see with the help of diagram this is rate 0 in the rate 0 what will happen is there is a data a data a is divided into eight different uh blocks and all those eight different block will store in two drives but will not make a duplicate of anything now come to raid 1 here in one disk will store the original data another disk will store the duplicate data now come to raid 2 what will happen in raid 2 it is a instead of uh, block level division or block level stripping it will divide it into bit level uh here as you can see there is data a data b data c and data d data a has divided into a1 a2 a3 a4 and here also we have some disk which is called the parity disk especially which will uh used to store the duplicate data getting it which is used to store the duplicate data as you can see now rate 3 is similar to rate 
but here we have only one disk which is dedicated for the duplicate getting it so here what is the problem here the problem is if, if this particular disk fail then what will happen uh, okay this this particular disk fail then we have the duplicate uh, value available in all the disk but here we have uh, the whole disk is capable of storing the duplicate values so we have the advantages and the disadvantages in both raid 1 and raid 3 yeah sorry raid 2 and raid 3 now come to the level 4 which is called raid 4 is a block level distribution single parity drive right block level distribution but single parity drive now level 5 <laughs> here also there is a block level distribution but there is a distributed parity means your duplicate data is distributed level 6 independent data disk with double parity here we'll have the double duplicate data let's see with the help of diagram this is a rate 4 a is divided into a1 a2 a3 and there is only one parity available as you can see only one a duplicate value available now come to rate 5 here also a is divided into a1 a2 a3 but the thing is that the parity is distributed here the parity of a means the duplicate of a here the duplicate of b is there here the duplicate of c is there here the duplicate of d is there now come to rate 6 here there is a a1 a2 a3 but there are two prior, two copy this is copy of a another copy of a as you can see so there are two copies are there here also this is one copy this is another copy but it is distributed among the all the drive so there is no dedicated parity drive here there is a dedicated parity drive or the duplicate drive okay now come to another variation like level 0 plus 1 level 1 0 level 7 level raid s so we have different type of other uh, uh, raid variations also 0 1 0 1 means it will apply 0 first level 0 first and then 1 first here it will apply one first and then zero after that. Level seven is a trademark of a storage uh, computer corporation that adds cache to level three and four. What it did want to say is level seven is the specific raid level to the storage computer corporation there is a company which has uh, the that particular uh, uh, level 7 and raid s which is called parity raid it is the property of emc square company so there is a emc corporation which has this particular uh, variation of raid s let's see let's see we'll see 0 1 and then we'll see 1 0 and then level uh, 7 and s this is 0, 01. Zero, 01 means at bottom level we have 0, means here you can see in the 0 level we doesn't have any duplicate. But if we'll go to the 1 level, so this will be duplicated here. So these two disks is, is, is having the original data and these two disks having the duplicate of it. Now come to 1, 0. Here we'll, we'll apply 1 first. So this is original, this is duplicate. This is original, this is a duplicate. This is original, this is a duplicate in that. This is rate seven. What it want to uh, tell you is, it is uh, having a, a real time operating system in between the original data and the duplicate data. Then we have EMC, uh, which is called RAID S that we can see with this diagram. Uh, in EMC, uh, dedicated to this EMC square company, they have RAID S. In this, the parity is, uh, is in the one disk and it is distributed. So as you can see, there's a part A1, A2, A3, A4, but we are not storing the data A. Actually, we are storing the first part of A, B and C here. Then second part of A, B and C here. Then the third part of A, B and C here and the fourth part of A, B and C here. Instead of 
storing the duplicate of A, we are storing the duplicate of A, B, and C combine combine of so that is their strategy. Okay. So how much success which strategy is is depend upon the need of the company or the application of the company. So what is required by the company based on that, they will decide that which RAID concept or which RAID level will apply into storage. Okay. So this is all about your RAID concept, RAID, Redundant Area of Independent Disk. Or sometimes it's called redundant area of inexpensive disk. So that's all for okay. Uh, so we have some we have some time left. So let's go and see another concept which is called storage access. So we have seen all the storage hard drive and all those things, right? Uh, so in the storage access, we are bothering about uh, some some points. What are the point? First, <laughs> in which way we store the data? So we we'll store the data into in, in the form of blocks, and in hard drive it is called a sector. So sector is is is, is the smallest unit uh, of let's say five twelve is the standard five twelve byte. So five twelve byte of block we are used to store into the hard drive and the same block will will use it for the transmission or the read of the data. It is de desirable to keep as many blocks as possible in main memory. It says that see you all know the concept of uh, the concept uh, of uh, the computer architecture in this the scientist von Neumann has given us uh, the concept let like if we want to execute any program, so that program should be there in the main memory, right? So if program should be there in the main memory, why? The reason is because CPU doesn't have to uh, go hard drive to search for the data. It will take a lot of time because the size of the hard drive is very big. So it will take a smaller memory, much faster memory, which can make up the speed of the CPU. So for that, it says that whatever data or whatever program you want to execute, it should be available into the main memory. So to taking that concept, if we store data into the main memory, we'll store in the form of blocks. Usually we cannot keep all blocks in a main memory. So we need to manage the allocation of available memory spaces, whichever memory is available. So it depend upon your main memory size. Let's say if it is of 4 GB and your program is of much more um, a larger size. So we'll store only those data which currently required by the CPU and then slowly we'll make a a replacement or swapping of the previous data with the with the current data and then will uh, that data will be available for the CPU for the further execution. We need to use disk uh, storage for the database and to transfer block to the data between main memory and the disk. We also want to minimize the number of such transfer as they are time consuming. So as it want to say it, it want to say is if i required anything means if a cpu required any program to execute it should first go to the main memory if it is not available in the main memory then control will go to the hard drive from the hard drive the data will be copied into the main memory and from the main memory again cpu will use it so that time means the miss time will be happen when a CPU is looking for the data and data is not available, that is a miss. If miss is happening, so there is a time which is taking for transferring the data from the secondary memory to the main memory. This should not will be a will uh, this should not be a fault uh, into the real time operating system or into the into the very uh, dedicated uh, application. 
So for that, it want to say that there should be some mechanism by which we can reduce this particular time. So we'll use the concept of buffer. The buffer is a part of the main memory available for storage of copying the disk block. So whatever disk block is required in future by the CPU, what will happen is in the buffer, we are going to store those data so that so that my system will execute for faster period of time or it will execute faster. So there is a concept of buffer. Okay. So we'll use the buffer manager. The buffer manager is, this is the responsibility of buffer manager to find it out those blocks of data which may be available for the future requirement. So there is some um, um, strategy that we'll use like replacement strategy we'll use like which which block will will be required um, into the main memory. Then we have the concept of pin block, the block that is not allowed to be written back to the disk is said to be pin memory that could be used uh, storage data that has not been uh, committed yet. So what it, it is, is the pin block means the block or the chunk of data that that is there in the main, in the main memory, but will not allow to go to to be uh, removed from the main memory. Why? Because uh, in the program, there may be the modification in that particular data forced output of block. So sometime what will happen is forcefully we have to take the block from the main memory to the drive so that we can make the space for next piece of blocks. So for that we'll use it, we, we, we use the forced output of the blocks concept. So there is a replacement, a repl replacement uh, a strategy that will apply by the buffer manager. Pin block so the block will be pinned for uh, the period of time so that if there is a modification, the modification will be done in the main memory and then will put into the hard drive. Then there is a force output of the block whenever uh, it required to uh, empty the places. So forcefully some blocks will be deallocated from the main memory and, and um, uh, written back into the hard drive. So that is the responsibility of buffer manager. Then we have the concept of record and record type. So what is a record? Record is nothing but a unit which data is usually stored in. Each record is a collection of related data items where each item is uh, formed of one or more byte and correspond to the particular field of record. Records usually describe entities and their attributes. The collection of field name and their corresponding data type consists a uh, record type name and their corresponding data type consist of record type. So the record type is nothing but its name and the corresponding data type is called record type. Uh, we may say that the record type correspond to any entity uh, type and uh, a record of a specific type represent an instance of the corresponding entity type. Now, what is a record? Record is nothing but uh, a row in a table. One row, one record. Now, what is a record type? Record type is nothing but the name of that particular record and the type of it. Let's say we have the student table. In the student table, we have a student uh, roll number, its name, its uh, branch, and its uh, semester. So, what is record? Record is nothing but if I'll enter rule number one, name is Anil, let's say the branch is, let's say IT and the semester, let's say four semester. So if I put all those things, that is called one record. And what is record type? Record type is nothing but that record has type. What are the type? The First, the name. Name is rule number, then its name, then the branch and the semester is the name of that particular record and the type. What is the data type? So for roll number, we'll use alphanumeric. 
uh, for uh, name we'll use a string for uh, branch also we'll use a string and for the semester let's say we are using integer that is a type so that is called record type and record is nothing but a row and any given time whatever row will store that is called instance that we know that 